Welcome to the Southwest Florida Real Estate Update, hosted by the York Group of Downing Fry Realty. Our show will bring you the most up-to-date information on the local real estate market, presented by leading experts in the field. Hi, and welcome to the Southwest Florida Real Estate Update. I'm Michael York of the York Real Estate Group, and today we're joined by our host, Jim York, and his guest, Don Ross Jr., President of Ross Title and Escrow. Thank you, Michael, for the introduction. Well, Don, thanks for coming on the show. Thank you, Jim. Thanks for having me. So uh, let's tell our viewers they haven't seen you a little bit about yourself. I'm an attorney in Naples. I've been here since the 1980s. Uh, I have a degree in taxation. I'm the attorney and par part owner of Downing Fry Realty. Uh, own Ross Title and Escrow. We're on the corner of 6th Avenue North and 41. I have a, a, a nice team of ladies who've been with me uh, as a family unit uh, up to, or actually over than thir 30 years. Um, try to do a pretty decent job for, for our clients, get back to them on phone calls and so forth, and see my fair share of closings. Well, you do a wonderful job for our clients. They're Thank always you. thanking us for introducing them I to appreciate you. It. So uh, today we want to talk about hurricane protection mm -hmm. for buyers and sellers. The reason, uh, and I wanted to take it one step further because sure. it's not just hurricanes. We do have some storms down here, the downpours that you mm -hmm. can have a lot of damage from just to those. Sure. Um, and we are getting into the hurricane season. Hopefully we don't have one, but it is a good thing to educate the public on what their rights are when they do a contract, sure. buying or selling. So let's just start with a buyer that does a real estate contract and is in the process of the contract and closing, what, uh, what does the contract really say to protect them? Well, the seller is responsible to maintain the property. It's, it's, uh, most of it is on page seven of the NABOR contract. At the top of page seven, it, it gives the sellers maintenance responsibilities. It gives inspection possibilities. Uh, this latest incarnation of the contract added an additional walkthrough clause if we have uh, a, a, a casualty or a severe storm. Not only do you have your normal walkthrough, but you have a post-casualty uh, walkthrough to see if there was any damage caused by either the hurricane, the storm, whatever it might be. Uh, there's also some clauses in there that if the property is uninhabitable or uninsurable, uh, you can postpone closing. Uh, up to 30 days, and if you receive a letter from uh, the, the county or the insurance company saying it's, it's uninhabitable or uninsurable, right. you know either party has a right to terminate the contract for up to five days after that notice. So th there's there's safeguards in there. <clears throat> the differences from the way it was pre Irma, and for me Irma was a, a mile shed, um, is that they capped the landscaping responsibility for the seller at 1%. If, if this is just a regular house that's not part of a homeowner's association where the association has to take care of the yard or it's not part of a condo, if it's just a regular house like I live on Marco, uh, the most I would be liable for is 1% of the sales price. Uh, and if it's part of a condominium or a homeowner's association where they are responsible for maintaining your yard, uh, that is not part of the seller's maintenance responsibility. I don't know if you remember with Irma, uh, we had, you know, I, I would argue both sides of the question, That's depending right. upon who my client right. was, that the seller is responsible to maintain, that includes their percentage ownership in the common element. So we, we had a lot of escrows for that, you know, post Irma, right. and now that's yep. been eliminated by the contract. So how does a person deal with the association that, um, <coughs> uh, there, we don't know, but there could be a potential assessment down the road and after they close on the property. This, this well, it, part of your due diligence, uh, NABOR has a, an addendum, let's say it's just a homeowners association, they have an addendum where you get these three days to review the homeowners documents and cancel in your sole discretion. So I usually recommend to my buyers, just like I do for purchases of uh, condominiums, that you talk to the management company and you ask whether there are any pending insurance claims, is there a claims history, and you look closely at the reserves. That's right. Yep. Uh, and, and what are the reserves based on? When Are they based on a recent uh, bid from a, a roofer, for example, for mm -hmm. the roof reserves, or the painter for the paint reserves? Are they 10 years old? And the numbers don't 
aren't up to date. Yeah, what we run <coughs> a cost on that, which uh, probably you could uh, talk about this more, is that mm -hmm. let's say they build up the reserves and they the reserves, part of them were for painting the painting sure. houses or whatever condos. So that reserve has been depleted a lot because that was allocated and they've used it. So you, you need to ask a lot of questions, I you guess. You really right? do, and it, so. it's, it, it always changes. I, 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 when I review condominium documents now or homeowners documents for people, sometimes you get an association that's just redone everything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they've re new roof, new painting, new everything. Right. And the reserves are low, and it might be a, a high-end uh, building or a condominium unit. And I'll tell the buyers, well, the reserves are low. They always want to know, but they're low for a reason. You got a brand new roof. It has a useful life of hopefully 30 years. Uh, you got brand new paint job. You got brand new everything. Right. So that's why it's low, and you're dealing with wealthy people who generally pay their maintenance. So it wouldn't doesn't bother me as much you know, if it's in that context. Uh, if if they don't have any of that, if, it, if things haven't had a lot of work done the last two years and they're still low, well then that's that's a red flag for the buyers. Yeah, I want to just make one more point is on mm -hmm. insurance, it's when, you, when we do a contract with somebody, okay, mm -hmm. um, and we're, we've, it's finalized, okay, right. so I also, I try and have them get their insurance binded. Yes. Uh, okay, right immediately, you're shopping around, but because if you do have a hurricane or a storm, you know, the insurance companies sometimes put a hold on writing policies. So at yes. least if you're bind, binded, you're, you're protected uh, in that way. Yeah, you know, that cuts both ways. I mean, yes, you get the insurance. Yes, you're protected that way. But I, I remember with Irma, I, I actually got into an argument with my buyer. He was from Germany, and he wanted to close, I think it was like Thursday afternoon prior to Irma, and I think mm -hmm. it hit on a Saturday. Right. And I actually let my staff go home so they get their own homes ready for the storm. That's right. And I'm trying to explain to this gentleman that he's safer closing after the hurricane <laughs> because the seller is responsible to maintain the property. Right. I mean, and so, you know, sometimes you get that buyer who says, I want to close right now, even though it, it's not in their best interest, uh, especially if it's a high end property. You know, let the seller take the risk. Why are you taking the risk? Yeah, maybe the producer, while we're going on some of these other items mm -hmm. here, uh, could bring uh, the screen, on the screen, the contract up so people can read it while we're discussing the other items you have on this. And it's basically page seven. You get the seller's maintenance at the top, and, and again, there's, there's been modifications, uh, you know, the landscaping, or if it's something the homeowners association or condominium documents is responsible for, like the, the grounds, the clubhouse, the pool. Uh, you, that eliminates something that the seller is responsible for. Because again, with Irma, I had this all the time. There might be a special assessment the seller is responsible to maintain. We want to escrow ten thousand dollars for the potential, you know, special assessment down the road. Right. And the, the contract was unclear, so they they clarified that so that people like me can't argue out of both sides of my mouth. Well, Don, we're gonna. Take a little short break, talk a little bit about the York okay. Real Estate Group and maybe about you two on our commercials. Maybe. And, and, uh, yes, we are. Okay. And then um, we're going to talk about sellers and the contract, sure. what their rights are. Okay, and we'll Thank be you. right back in one minute. Thank you. Thinking of buying or selling a home in Naples, Marco Island, Bonita, or Estero, Florida? Think of the most experienced York Real Estate Group, associated with the number one brokerage in Southwest Florida, Downing Fry Realty, which produces yearly real estate transactions of over a billion dollars. Jim, Michael, and Morgan make up the York Real Estate Group of Downing Fry Realty, with over $275 million in sales transactions, along with offering over 25 combined years experience in the local market. The Yorks can offer the experience and trust you need in a Realtor. Call them today at 239-273-6727 or visit their website at www.naplesyorkrealestate.com. Looking for a real estate closing agent in Southwest Florida? Ross Title and Escrow has over 25 years experience and has closed over 20,000 residential real estate transactions. Donald Ross Jr., president of Ross Title and Escrow and a practicing attorney in the state of Florida with a degree in taxation, is here to service your needs. Call Mr. Ross or one of our four closing agents for a free consultation today. 
Welcome back. Well, Don, let's, uh, we've talked about the buyers with the contract. Right. What's, uh, what's in there for the sellers? Well, I, I, I actually made some phone calls. I'm always trying to improve on this. Spoke to insurance people. Uh, again, tried to learn from past experiences. Uh, pictures again. You take pictures of everything. Um, you want to be able to show this is the condition of the property at the time for insurance purposes or right. contract purposes. Um, in regards to your insurance policy, uh, and this is after talking to our mutual friend, uh, Chris Mitchell, uh, who sells these policies, uh, bring your declaration page with you. Um, well, he says a lot of his clients don't n know how much coverage they have, don't know uh, the amount of their deductible, don't know what's excluded. It's so true. I mean, it's, it's, it's incredible, but bring that with you. Uh, the, the number that you have to call to make a claim right. in case you come home to a leveled house. Yep. You, know, you, want, you want to bring that. Um, have your property inspected. I mean, I know I did before Irma. I had uh, the cables around my screen tightened. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, look at the vegetation around your, your home. Uh, you may have liability if you have a tree that was killed by the last storm, but you haven't cut it down yet. If you have a sick or a dead tree and it falls on a neighbor's car or their home, uh, you have a legal liability. You know, so you know, anything that right. potentially could create an issue. Uh, we had a series of uh, companies going around inspecting roofs from the last storm. And one of the standard uh, diagnoses I would see would be that there are loose tiles. Well, if you have knowledge of loose tiles, tiles. that could potentially be a projectile, you have a responsibility to make sure they're firmly uh, a fixed. I, mm -hmm. I have a client who bought a $2 million home who was told he had loose tiles and mm -hmm. he says, Don, the, the home is watertight, it's structurally sound, it's fine. I said, yes, but you know there are loose tiles and if one becomes a projectile in a storm and hits somebody, hurts somebody, right. you're going to have a doozy of a lawsuit. So you know, look around the yard right. and see what is there that could create a problem in a high wind situation and, and address it. Uh -huh. yeah. What we did at our house was we, I put towels on the window sills of everything because there's right. a lot of leaks that come in and around the doors because water can come in, uh, you know, just from the rain, not even from anything. So that's, maybe that's not part of this, the contract, it's not, but it's just something, you know, I did. I took all the towels I could and put them around there. And when we came home, they were damp. So. It, it did serve its purchase. Well, purpose. I mean, when we were, I mean, I, I had to fly back uh, for Irma to get my parents, and uh, we did a rush job on the house, my wife and I, and uh, I remember my wife asking, well, what do you want to put in the walk-in closet? And we had these waterproof bins, mm -hmm. and, you know, everybody's different, but for us it was uh, pictures of the kids, the backup hard drives of the children's photos and the grandchildren. You know, the things that have personal meaning that cannot be replaced. So right. put some thought into what you value and where do you want to put it. And, you know, That's furniture right. can be replaced, mm -hmm. you know, stuff can be replaced. But, you know, the, the important things, you know, legal documents, do you have a safe deposit box, your wills right. and so forth. Uh, and again, bring your deck page with you. So. Um, Young families, uh, you, you want a to-go bag. You have stuff for your, your young children, um, and baby formula, diapers. You just be, it's not really a legal That's you right. know, advice. It's just yep. thinking it through. Um, I always told my children, you know, get money out of the ATM and fill up all the cars with gas. Right. Uh, after Irma, we have three vehicles, and gas was hard to get. They had those long lines. And it was great. I had another vehicle with gas in it, and I could drive around for a week and wait for the lines to go away. So, I, you know, you think it through. Yeah, you have to have a nice plan. So, um, so there's anything else in this contract we can bring up the contract again? And well, so maybe uh, can people back can to it? the buyer for a split second. Uh, I know we've pushed this before, but, but have your inspection company do the walkthrough. Right. And then if there's a casualty, you're entitled to another walkthrough. Mm -hmm. And they help establish the condition of property from the time it was initially inspected to the post-casualty ca inspection. And that helps the buyer recover what, what they can get. Um, if you have, um, depending on what kind of windows you have, if you have impact glass, you're, you're fine. Mm -hmm. you know, but I'd have somebody check it. 
Uh, my parents had uh, sh shutters, and they were in their 80s. Right. My dad wasn't capable of putting Put the shutters shut up, up, so right. you, you have a plan for that. Some of his shutters were broken. He had to get those fixed. So, you know, check those things out. Uh, the listing agreement, again, <coughs> requires owners to eliminate unsafe conditions. So that's a, a broad area, dead trees, sick trees, ostensibly even coconuts, um, lawn, you know, lawn furniture, furniture right. anything that could be a, a projectile, uh, and then get yourself and your family to a, a safe location. Uh, know what's in the contract, know your deductibles, know your exclusions, which usually landscaping and pool right. enclosures. Um, keep an eye on how old your roof is, because over time, I think there's a cumulative effect of all the storms we That's go through right, yep. and they, the nails gradually get less right. and less secure. Uh, so I, I try to be proactive and replace the roof before, you know, the, uh, it starts to leak. That's right, yep. I always tell my clients, I say, there's a process where the leak begins and then there's a series of events that have to happen before it hits your living room. You know, it's got to it's got to go through the shingles. It has to go through the underlayment. It has to get through the plywood. It has to get through the attic. And then it gets into your oh, living room. Right. So even though you don't seem to have any leaks, something may be going on. So don't get greedy and try to get the last five minutes of your useful life. Be yeah. proactive. Definitely have to be proactive. So. Well, Don, I appreciate you coming on the oh, show. Appreciate and I'm being here. sure this has been useful to a lot of people that so. haven't been through a hurricane or a big storm down here. It could be just a, just a storm. Yeah, just think it through. Right. Just think it through. Thank you, and we'll uh, see you next week, and thank you for tuning in today.